Okay, welcome folks to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you from the Learn to Paint Academy. And in this week's episode, we're going to do a couple of figures sitting on the beach uh, near Noosa River, where I was out plain, plain air painting with a group of students the other day. And uh, this will make for a, a different subject. Let's have a look at the photo. So there's the photo there. We've got two figures. And what I liked about this particular uh, um, image is that you've got one figure in the shade, and then the other figure is partly in the shade, partly uh, you know, out in the sun getting highlights. Um, so it'll make a nice contrast between the two figures. You got that nice blue umbrella. Uh, the background, the, the water looks pretty choppy. We're gonna simplify and minimize all of that right down so we don't have to worry about that. We're just gonna focus in on doing the figures um, as, a, as a subject. And if you enjoy doing figure painting, then uh, this will be a nice little challenge for you. It's, a, it's probably a good skill to develop is uh, being able to put figures into a landscape or a seascape. And look out for our course coming up on romantic figures uh, in the landscape coming up soon. Now, let's just come down to our palette. Now, as I said, I was out plain air painting. So this is my rather crusty old plain air painting palette. But I had some paint left over, so I thought I'd best use it up. So same palette as always, we've got our ultramarine blue or French ultramarine blue. I've got the permanent alizarin crimson, okay. Then I've got my uh, yellow ochre, which has all got a bit muddy there, but that's okay. And some titanium white. So they're my three base colors, okay, titanium white. And then my booster color, cadmium red and cadmium yellow light will pop some of those in as well. And uh, should make for a nice little painting. As far as brushes concerned, I'm going to use flat brushes and we will use a couple of large ones for the blocking of the water and sand and so on, and then a couple of small ones. And we might get into a little detail brush um, a bit further on. These are all flat brushes and they're uh, bristle hair brushes. Okay, so we're going to use the more method of painting to, uh, to do this painting here today. Um, this is a method we've taught to 30,000 students at the Learn to Paint Academy, and it applies just as well with figures as it does with landscapes and seascapes. So let's get underway with step one of the more method of painting. And step one, of course, is our drawing, finding our big shapes and getting our drawing in. So I always start off with a nice little mix of dark. You can see you get a stain on the board there from where I've mixed my darks previously. So it's just the blue and the red. Mix those together. There's no right mix for this. Um, but what you do want to do is make sure you've got that paint thin right down. I'm using water mixable oils, uh, but feel free to use acrylics for this or traditional oils. Just make sure this paint initially is quite thin. Okay. So the reason why we want it thin is we want it to dry out before we get to step two. I'm going to place my figures over in this section here. This is a little 9 by 11 inch canvas panel, just a cheapie. And uh, I'm going to place my figures on, you know, around about here, which is, uh, if you know anything about composition and design, that is our um, one third mark, the intersecting point there. Okay, so I've got one figure who is sitting down around about here. Okay, there's her arm there. And she's got a hand out there and a little head okay don't make them too big it's very easy to start out too big and and then you're struggling from that point forward right the other figure is uh, sitting slightly higher slightly more like that and a little bit more complex in the drawing but the same sort of body shape okay body is sitting there like that and then there's a leg coming out that way okay She's got a leg there. She's got another leg coming out that way. Okay. With this one, you can see the lower part of her leg just a little bit, but with the uh, other one, not so much. She's got her head kind of sloped, sloped forward a little bit, and we've got a, an arm that's sort of resting against that leg there. Okay. So we'll just find that just slightly forward of the other lady here. Okay. And really, that's all we need to find at this stage. And we talk about big shapes. That is what we're looking for, right? And then we've got, we've got our sand line is running around about through there. So, you know, put that sand line around about one third of the way up. Okay. It's just about having good composition and design, like so. And it's a question then of the water, 
how much water do we put in and so on. I think what we'll do is we'll um, perhaps, uh, there's, this is sort of like the river mouth here. There's some sand and things running up the beach there. And then in here, we'll put a little bit of a wave, but not too much because we don't really want the wave to be competing with our figures. Okay, so we've got two, two ladies there enjoying the sunshine. And just above their heads, we've got this umbrella, which comes in here like so. And it probably ends around about there. Okay. And goes in about there. So we've got a couple of sections on the umbrella. There's that one there. So that one there. And then there's that one there. And then, of course, there's a pole holding up the umbrella. But we don't need to worry about that just yet. Okay. There's a few other little details, like there's a bag and so on, sitting around in the towels. Let's not worry about those just yet. Okay, we'll get to those in, in due course. So that's really all we need to do here for our blocking. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Anyone, uh, sorry, not for our blocking, for our drawing, of course. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and anyone can do it. So in the more method of painting, we like to keep our drawing really simple and it's about identifying those big shapes and um, getting those big shapes placed in the right area in the canvas. Notice I've got the interest or the focal point off center and really that one third intersecting mark is gonna be right between them there so the eye's drawn in there, okay? So it's just a little bit of a design uh, consideration rather than taking all this and putting it right smack in the middle which wouldn't be as appealing of a, of a composition, okay? So our next step now is to start blocking in and getting some color down. So what we'll do is we'll block these two figures in in, in a dark, then we'll block all around it, um, get the umbrella in, and then in step three, we'll then start to pull some of those details together and, and tighten it up a little bit. So let's get on to step two. Okay, in step two, we need to block in. So I'll start out with the two ladies. And what I'll do initially is we'll um, pick out their uh, skin color, that dark skin color. So we'll start with the ultramarine red, uh, sorry, the permanent alizarin crimson, right? A little bit of the ultramarine blue and some of this yellow ochre in here, okay? So I wanted to get a darkish skin tone. It's actually quite dark in there. So um, I'm gonna go with that first, okay? So let's just Punched up the red there. So because it is skin tone, it's going to be slightly on the warmer side. But it looks a little bit chocolatey brown as well. They've got good sun tans here. So we'll get some of that. Okay. Now again, this paint's quite thin. I've got a fair bit of water in there by design. You know, I, um, I want to keep the paint thin at this stage. A little hand sticking out there. And then we're seeing the upper part of her back and shoulders and part of her leg coming down there. Okay. And then we've got her, her um, bathing outfit. Actually, we'll do all the hair. It's all pretty much the same tone. It's sort of silhouette. Okay. So we'll get that dark in there. Now there's this other lady's partly in shadow and she's partly in light. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat her all as in shadow and we'll come back and put the lights on um, as we progress and develop this painting. So there's her arm running out there. Okay, leaning against that leg and there's a foot there. Poking out, okay. And she's got a lighter color hair, but there is some dark shadows within it. So therefore we'll start out with the darker shadow. Probably made that a little touch big, so we'll cut that back, okay. Now, we'll get some of that more purpley tone there, and we'll just put in a little bit of shadow underneath the umbrella there. And with this sort of shadow, cast shadow like that, I always make it a little bit bigger than perhaps what it is. And then I can come back and cut back with the uh, lighter tone of the sand there if I need to. Now, we'll get a darker red. 
The bathing suit on this first lady is a dark red. Okay, runs to about there. So we'll make a note of that. And now with this umbrella, we've got some nice contrast with the blues there. So we'll get some pure blue. We'll take a little bit of this dirty tone just to dirty it up a little bit. And then we'll go, okay, well, we'll and a little bit of the red just to, again, push it a little bit. Not so happy, happy tube blue. Okay. Then we'll come in here and we'll go, okay, where are the darker tones in this blue? There's a dark passage there. Okay. Little touch of it there. And there. And then really that whole part of the umbrella there. Okay. Maybe a little touch there. And then in here, it sort of runs down to about, about there. And then we lighten it off because there's a um, rest of it's in a fairly light tone. So we'll add some white. Okay, that might be a little bit on the light side, but let's just pop it on and see. Probably a little bit too saturated, but we're just in the blocking. So if I need, if I feel I need to adjust it, I will um, certainly come in and do that in the next step. good it's probably a little passage of it that gets even lighter again running down here a little bit running down there a little bit in there okay so that's not a bad start happy with that now we need to move on and, and block in some of these bigger areas. So perhaps I'll use that same brush. And we'll grab some titanium white here and we'll get a little bit of this yellow ochre. I've got a bit of blue in the brush because I didn't fully clean it. Okay, so that'll just dirty that up a little bit, which is what we want. Uh, maybe lighten it up a bit more too. And let's pop in this distant sandy embankment here. Now I'm doing this fairly thick paint because I'm really not going to come back in and repaint any of this. Okay, this is just going to sit there in the background. So it's going to be quite nondescript really. It's really just part of the setting, yeah? Okay. So above that, we've got a row of trees. Get some blue, get some yellow. Get plenty of white into that. going to run in the indication that there's trees or something happening out here. Notice I'm doing this really rough because it doesn't need any you know, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just, it's a little backdrop. And I really don't want the eye being drawn out here anyway. So I'll dirty up that sand a little bit, put a few little bits of 
sort of grasses or something coming out over that. So that gives us a little backdrop. What do we do in that gap up there? Well, that's potentially a little bit of sky. So I'll just get um, some of the white, tiniest little bit of blue. Get some water into that because I want that paint to be a little bit thinner. And let's just test. That's probably too dark. I'll get more white into that. Okay, it was a fairly grey day when we took the photo. We were down the Noosa River mouth opening, doing some painting. And um, yeah, it was a fairly grey old day. There we go. Good, good. So that brings us now to the water. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block the water in with one fairly sort of um, static sort of tone. I'll get a bluey green. Okay, a big chunk of blue. Get the yellow ochre into that. Get some cadmium light. Uh, now I want to do this fairly overall. I want to have it fairly high key. If you look at the photo, the photo is showing um, the water as being fairly dark, but I don't necessarily want to paint it that way. I want the whole painting to be high key, so low value overall. Uh, and then the contrast with that will be the dark shadow figure. Okay, it'll make that dark shadow figure pop out more. So I'll just mix up a, a lighter value green than what's in the photo. We'll keep this paint fairly thin and loose so we can pop a few little details onto it later on. Okay. And then we'll just start scooping that up and I'll just lay it in. I won't fuss with this too much at all. Okay, see that? So it's a light greeny gray that we're utilizing. And I'm not gonna fuss with it too much at this stage, right? So it reads as being, you know, the river mouth opening with a distant embankment. That's north shore of Noosa over there. Anyone who knows the area, um, will you know, be able to, we'll see it as it is, as, as it's intended. Even without a lot of details, you know, just by giving it the name Noosa River Mouth Figures, something like that. You know, anyone who knows the area will, will go. Oh, yeah, I know where that is. Just near the Doggy Beach, and around the corner from. Uh, you know, the Hastings Street and, and Noosa Front Beach. So all the tourists end up on the Noosa Front Beach and you'll find a lot of locals around near the river mouth here. You do have to be careful while I was there taking photos. Um, there's a breakwater or break wall near the Coast Guard Tower. And there was a big old brown snake there, so make sure you watch where you put your beach towel down. <laughs> and brown snakes, of course, are the uh, second most deadly snake in the world, apparently. Not that I want to find out, I'll just keep a wide berth. Okay, so we cut around these elements here. This is where we're going to just be a little bit on the careful side, yeah? and pull her head back because she was a little bit big. And notice we're getting some different tones coming out in the water. That's desirable. Um, we don't want it to be just a flat color. So just avoid getting a flat color with your water in particular. Okay. If you do, just pick up one of the other color, like either the blue or the yellow, and just make it a little bit stronger in parts. See, I'm picking up a little bit of blue there, just bluing up that mix. Then I can come in here and go, okay, well, there's a little bit of blue, which should help it tie in with the um, umbrella a little bit more, yeah? Okay. And then I'll get a little bit more yellow ochre in there. Just carefully, just picking it off here. If I make a mistake and I paint over the 
figures too much, it's not a problem. Because I can always just put that pump back. Okay. Okay, now as it gets closer to the shoreline there, I'm going to lighten it off with more white. I'm going to put more yellow ochre into it because what happens is the water gets shallower and as it gets shallower, you get more of the sunlight bouncing off the sand, sandy bottom. And it will get a little bit more on the yellow ochre side. I'm getting a little touch fiddly there. So for those of you who are interested in learning more about painting figures, we're soon to release a new course on figure painting so you might want to look out for that the romantic figures uh, introduction first and then we'll follow it up with a couple more courses okay now i need to just give that brush a little bit clean and just going to pop in some sand now so we'll take a big chunk of that yellow good helping of the yellow ochre in there it's a little bit on the green side from my brush, but that's okay. It'll keep it all held together. I'm going to put a pinhead of alizarin into it as well. Get it a bit lighter in parts. Okay. And just pull some of that greenness out of the brush. And what I'll do is I'll just hold the brush down the end like so. Come to here and we'll just scoop up this paint. <laughs> like that. Get a little touch of the water into it and then let's come in here and just bring this sand in here can push that shadow back up if i need to Okay, starting to look like two figures sitting in the sh shade there on the beach, which is handy because that's that's what we're painting. So um, that means that the values are starting to work well. And all is good. Darken that up a little now. Adding some more yellow ochre. looking good made a good start soften a few things out of the back there 
really this back section we really just don't want people's eye being drawn to this at all so I don't detail it up uh, but I think we're off to a pretty good start and um, we've set ourselves up to make a nice little painting well folks that brings us to the end of step two which is our blocking step you've just seen me do so step one we drew our little figures in and so on step two we put color down just to start to establish this as a as a little painting a little subject and i think we're going along nicely we've, we've got a, a good little painting happening we've got our darks all in here and then the rest of it's fairly what i call high key it's it's lighter values all the way through okay so in the photo it's showing a little bit darker in the water so make sure you, you go a bit lighter because that'll then push out these darks and create greater contrast with the darks and make for a more interesting painting so next step is I'm going to leave this for a half an hour to an hour go and have a break um, if you're using acrylics you definitely want this to be fully dry if you're using water mixable oils you know that little break will help the water just set off a little bit the paint will get a little bit tacky and you'll be able to work back into it um, in no time so we're on track we're looking good and uh, i will see you in the next section step three and really in step three we'll do a little bit of detail on the water we'll spend most of our time detailing up the figures and, and what to round them and the umbrella and then that'll be it you know a really simple little painting to do and uh, we're just following a very basic process to to pull this together as a nice little painting so um, I'll see you shortly in step three cheers okay welcome back folks we are now going to do step three of the more method of painting which is where we bring our painting together now with our details highlights finishing touches this is dried off a little bit it's still wet obviously being water mixable oils but the water's dried out of it and it's going to give us a nice surface to work back into so let's get underway and start to get this painting uh, to come to life a little bit more so first thing i'm going to do I've, I've just lost a little bit of my dark in here so i'm going to just uh, work on that and just remix that dark up Right that a little bit there, so I'll just I think we had a little bit of the yellow acre in there. There we go, that's looking like it. Oh, it's a little bit on the red side, not a touch more blue. There we go. So I'll just touch up this in here. Just to give it a little bit more strength. Okay, so she's got her arm out there. I've got the leg there. And so on. Now in this one here, I just need to just re-strengthen that part. Put that shoulder there. That leg there. And that leg goes to there. So she's sort of got a uh, leg spread out there a little bit. Okay, so just clean that brush off. And now our woman in the shadow. Okay. she's got a red dress uh, red bathing suit on so just put a little bit more red into that it didn't, it's all in shadow so it's going to be a darker red and then it's got some white polka dots on there which we will pop in in a little while So now we've got highlights on this woman across half of her back, a bit on that arm, a little bit on that leg and up on this leg here. So to get that, we're going to take a nice chunk of the white there. We're going to take a little bit of the cadmium red, a little bit of the cadmium yellow. And we'll just see what that looks like. And um, 
whether that's the right mix. Okay, it's a little bit on the yellow side, so a little bit more of the red in there. That's too much red. But I'll just tone it back a bit with a touch of blue. Okay, get a bit more white. Let's mix that to the side because I think overall it's too dark. And so you can see now we're starting to get a nice sort of fleshy tone happening there. However, she's a little bit more golden suntan tone. So I'll put a bit more yellow into that mix and that's looking more like it. Okay, so I'll mix that up. Now what I'll do is I'll just take my paper towel, I'll just pull some of that paint out. So I've got a clean brush to start with. And then I'll just start loading the tip and I'll turn the brush back and forward. Okay, so we'll get the paint up on that tip there. That'll give me more control. So we come down here and we know that she's got light on that part of her arm there. Okay, there's light on her leg just there. And there's light across her back here. So, there's a light over on this leg, just there. Okay. Now, because she is more in light than this lady, probably her dark tones there uh, are probably just a little bit too dark. So let me just see if I can't just warm them up a little bit with a bit more of this tone here. That's probably a bit better. And I'll just pull the paint out of the brush and just soften in the edge there. Just to get a little bit more. The hair is a lot of tone. Um, I'll get a little bit of yellow ochre into that mix. Let's just now her bathing suit is kind of a green, so we'll go blue, come in yellow. more to the blue side just run into there and then it runs into there as well and there is also running up that side And then running down to there. So that's good. Take that and a little bit of that. Now there is a beach bag, which I'll mix with this cadmium yellow. It's actually probably more of an orange, so I'll get a little bit of red into that. Let's just try that. Let's pop that in here. Okay. 
section. Then there's um, another beach bag on the, with the other lady. So let's get this sort of lighter blue tone for that one. Let me just run that one into around right about there. Little beach bag there. And then there's the beach towel. A light blue. I'll, I'll darken it a little bit more than what it's actually in the photo. Something like that. And that is in here. That's what she's sitting on. something just around about there Maybe a little something like that just to give it a little touch more color in there okay. there's a couple of other bits and pieces sitting around under this uh, umbrella there a little bit difficult to distinguish them. Just try and pull out a little bit, a little bit of colour in the other lady, but not too much. There's a shoulder strap there, which is a light tone. Might just make it slightly on the bluer side though, so it's not white, which wouldn't look right in the shadows. I don't think that's going to work. I think what we'll do is I'll just paint her bathers in one tone and not worry about the not worry about the um, polka dots so much and let us get in a light but not white grab it back so i've just mixed that up with some white i've got my palette knife here clean the palette knife and then i can just come through and cut in a ribbon like that see that there it's a very subtle little ribbon Come up here. Mix up a little bit of a darker version. that
Okay, now, get into some of this white foam. So again, we'll mix that white into that gray area there. Lay the brush up. I'm going to have some white foam off in the distance here. So I'll pop a little bit of that in. Not too much. Pop in a, um, a little bit of a breaking wave there. There's a bit more of a one just there. Pop that in. And then in between them, a little bit tricky here, but uh, we can just pop in. Now if that gets a little bit too much, I can just paint some more uh, water around, pull some of that foam out if I need to. That's no problem. In fact, let's do a little bit of that now. and a bit of that green. And we'll just pop that underneath here. Okay, a little bit of a indication of a red label or sign right there. So I'll pop that in. There's a couple little patches of white. I'll take a little rigger brush here. A little touch of water just to keep the paint loose. And um, details there. And look, we'll just pop a few little marks into the sand just to keep that from being too flat. So I'll just use my palette knife. You could use your brush for that if you wanted to. But um, let's just get some darker little passages in here and some you know some interesting marks with the knife I can smooth anything out that doesn't quite look right just by lighting the brush up like so and if it doesn't quite look right I'll just 
work back into it. Pin had a red in there just to keep it interesting. And look, do we fiddle around with it more, or do we say that uh, you know, fun little demo, um, quick little study that shows you how you can go and snap off photos of people at the beach and um, easily create some. Fun little paintings from it, or if you've got kids or grandkids, take photos of them down at the beach. Endless subjects um, to paint, really, isn't there? So, as it's intended to be just a little demo, and I'm quite happy with the way it's out now, I think we'll pretty much leave it there. Um, a good fun little painting for you to have a go at. Soften that out the back there a bit. You know, if you pop that in a little white frame, that's going to end up looking great in a little frame. So I'll sign this one so I can pop it up on eBay where I sell off my little demo paintings. So if you're interested, go and look for Rod Moore on eBay. Well, there you go, folks. There's our little painting of our two figures on the beach. We've got the main one here is in complete shadow. And then we've got her friend sitting out in the sunshine a little bit. And I think we've overall captured that. Uh, it was a quick little demonstration painting to show you some of the principles. And um, we've got our, shadow in the, our figure in the shadow and our figure who's partly in the light. And you've seen the process. We've used the more method of painting. We've kept it really simple. And uh, you know this is very achievable little painting. And it opens your eyes up to the fact that you could go down the local park take photos of people walking their dogs or walking through the park um, or go to the beach and take photos of your grandkids or your children and you've got endless little figure paintings like this to do as a result and um, the more you do them the easier they become and notice that I've used the more method of painting step one our drawing big shapes step two our blocking and step three of course we started to just add in a few little details and it didn't take many details to sort of pull this together as a demonstration painting so um hope you've enjoyed this one i've certainly enjoyed uh painting it for you and I look forward to seeing you next week on learn to paint tv and if you haven't done so already please go to the website address i'll pop it underneath me here where you can go and register for a free course um, that we give away at the learn to paint academy so it's www.learntopaint.academy and then look for the link to the free course and you get more information about the uh, more method of painting and uh, there's four different painting demonstrations there for you to have a go at and also check out all the past episodes of learn to paint tv uh, again the web address underneath me here uh, you can go and check all the back issues and i look forward to seeing you next week on learn to paint tv happy painting cheers <music>